Well, thanks for coming. I would crack a lot more jokes, but I don't know who's watching online <laughs> and they're keeping it forever. So I'm going to try to be on my best uh, behavior. But as promised, which I know is why you're here, we're giving out free gift cards to this place for $15. You have a really good chance of winning. Uh, <laughs> sign up if you want to sign up for my author newsletter. Uh, just sign up. If you're already on it, just sign up again to get yourself in the drawing. And we'll give those out uh, at the end. So uh, I want to tell you a little bit about my author journey. Uh, think about your questions. I did advertise this as a family-friendly event. My children are here. My wife is here. Even though, yes, I wrote a book for men on some some, uh, something that I'm just going to talk about in code tonight because there's things I don't want to explain to my four-year-old, and eight-year-old, and nine-year-old <laughs> quite yet. Uh, but uh, I took a sabbatical in 2012 from the church I was pastoring in Lansing that I planted. And in that sabbatical, I wrote the first draft of this book, which you helped edit. So that was almost 10 years ago which is why. Um, and I was trying to figure out how to get a book published. I started a blog. I read a book on how to get a book published. I did a lot of things authors are supposed to do to get a book published. Uh, in 2015, I got an agent and I thought I was the man because I had an agent. <laughs> I thought the rest will all take care of itself. I had an agent for two years and I tried really hard to get published. Uh, we knocked on the doors of many publishers. They all said no. Uh, be, and, and that was hard. It's, it's hard to get rejected. It's hard, uh, you know, kind of over and over again to get your hopes up. And then you felt like getting dumped. You know? <laughs> and so um, I exited from sort of the publishing world, the publishing, uh, I, 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 I mean, just that the whole, the whole cycle of trying to get published. And I, Indie Published, also known as Self Published, and uh, came out with a book in 2018. It was called Beyond the Battle of All Titles, right? Uh, <laughs> same book, uh, but it was uh, the 2018 version. It had a red and white and black cover, and it was great. And I wrote the book because I wanted to do ministry. I didn't write the book because I wanted uh, to be a published author or have some credit to my name. Uh, I already had a bunch of men from my church and otherwise who were ready for this book because I was blogging about this subject. I was preaching about this subject and I didn't have an accessible book with me that went below the symptoms, below the surface level. And so uh, I wrote the book for ministry purposes. We started doing online small groups through the book in 2018, which we still do. So if anybody watching uh, online or anyone here is interested, in those groups, beyondthebattle.net, we meet for seven weeks, go through the book together, and now we have an alumni group uh, that I'm a part of, and we meet every Saturday morning indefinitely for accountability and encouragement and to pray for each other. And that's something we just started earlier this year. So I did that in 2018 and really just thought that was that was it for this. My plan was to uh, go to back to school, do a PhD. I was going to enter back into the author world at a later date down the line. Uh, three people, uh, I dedicated this book to them. Uh, I just used their, their first names, uh, but Pete, Chris, and Justin. Um, Pete is my brother. Chris is a, a pastor that I did not know before writing the book, and Justin works at a campus ministry. They had read the book, and they just kept bugging me and pushing me to get it traditionally published. I said, no, I already tried that. I don't want to go back into that. I got dumped enough times. So I don't want to get dumped again. It just wasn't good for my soul. They bugged me enough. I said, okay, I still know. Uh, I know one guy uh, from Zondervan. I met him at a, 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 a writer's conference here in Grand Rapids. And Zondervan hadn't ever given me an official no. They, in fact, they were interested at the time or, or you know, said they were, um, and it just kind of dragged out forever. They said it wasn't the right timing, and that was kind of bad. So reconnected with him via email uh, early 2019, wanted to know if he wanted to get lunch. I 100% thought he would say no or not write me back. Uh, he did write me back. We did get lunch, and for the next year of 2019, uh, there was this book in play that 
potentially get published by Zondervan. I did not have an agent anymore. Uh, not a ton of change in my life. It's not like my blog or my podcast uh, took off uh, as far as platform goes. Uh, but God's timing just is what it was. And I had the very unique opportunity when in the spring of 2020, uh, that conversation was on that over a year later turned into a book contract for the new updated and expanded Beyond the Battle. And what's really cool about this journey is I got to publish a book and have hundreds of guys read it. And dozens of those guys I was walking with day in and day out for seven weeks in those small groups. If you're like me, you read a book and parts of it help you, parts of it don't help you. There's things that could be better in the book. And you'd like to give feedback and say, hey, could you make this better? But you can't do that in a book because it's a book and it's out and it's, it's, it's hard copy. Well, in this case, we could do that. And it really was a great opportunity over the course of two and a half years to get to really compile new content. A lot of it came from the guys that were in my Beyond the Battle groups. A lot of it came from my own life as I'm trying to stay strong in these areas. And uh, this is working over here, but this isn't working anymore. And so, okay, God, what now? And, and kind of coming up with new ways and deeper ways, and deeper ways, and deeper ways to connect with Jesus uh, at a deep level. So that's what I love about this edition of the book. It truly is an updated, expanded edition. Uh, there's lots of added stuff throughout the book that makes it uh, much, much better. And at the, at the end of the book, I added a whole new chapter, uh, which I'm going to read a little bit to, uh, to you uh, tonight. So um, I want to share, before I do that, I just want to share a little encouragement from scripture to, to you. Um, and it really, I would say, is the, is the, I know there's several kind of foundations of this book, but this is one of the foundations, and this applies to anybody, anywhere, man, woman, child, it doesn't matter what your stage of life is what your struggles are. Uh, this is something I think we all have in common. So for, for me, uh, I found that the root of my issues that I write about in Beyond the Battle came from looking for acceptance, validation, and approval. Now I was looking for those things from women and some women look for those things from men, but I also look for those things in my book sales. I look for those things in my blog stats. I look for those things and how many people attend my church. I look for those things and how many people liked or commented on a social media post. I look for those things and does this person like me, accept me, do they, you know, do they think I'm cool or, or whatever it may be. Uh, you might look for those things in your career. You might look for those things in your circle of friends. You might look for those things in the house you live in or whatever it may be. And likely if you're married, you do try to look for those things from your spouse. And if you're single, you do try to look for those things in a potential date or a potential person that you might end up with. And again, these things are someone that would look at us or something that according to that little voice inside of us, if we just had it, then we would have the stamp of approval on our lives. The stamp of approval that says you've made it, you're valuable. The stamp of approval that says, uh, I approve of you. I accept you. And what I found is that this was a thirst in me that no person or thing could satisfy. And I found that the only, and this, please don't take this the wrong way, it's not meant to be Sunday school kind of pixie dust, but at a very deep level, the only person that could give me this acceptance, approval, and validation was Jesus himself. And the beauty was, I already had it. I didn't have to go looking for it. I was already a Christian. I was already a believer in the gospel of Jesus. I just hadn't tapped into the wealth that came with the gift of the gospel. And that really is the journey of Beyond the Battle. It's teaching us how to tap into that wealth of love, acceptance, and grace that we already have in Jesus. And whatever that thing is you're looking for, to give you that whether it's women or men or, or marriage or something in your singleness or job, whatever it might be, that we can actually feed off of Jesus every day. And in that feeding off of Jesus, we can find this love, approval, and acceptance. So at the end of Matthew 3, verses 16 and 17, Jesus gets baptized. He hears a voice from heaven, an audible voice. The Father speaks to Jesus, and he says, You are my son whom I love, and you I am well pleased. And I make the argument, 
biblically and beyond the battle, that that is true of every single one of us that are Christians. Every single one of us that are sons or daughters of God that have believed in the grace of Jesus. When the Father looks at us, he says, you are my son, you're my daughter, I love you, I am so pleased with you. It's not because of something I've done or something you've done, it's because of what Jesus did on our behalf. When uh, Colossians 1.22 is another passage that sort of connect to that one. In Colossians 1.22, the second part of the verse, it says, when the Father looks at us, he sees us as holy, so perfect. The Father sees us as perfect without blemish and free from accusation. And, and I internalize that as there, when, when God sees me, he sees me as the most valuable person possible. And the first half of the verse talks about how it's because of Jesus's body that was dead on the cross, resurrected from the dead. That's the redemption that makes me holy without blemish, free from accusation. One more, Romans 8, 15 to 17. It says that in Jesus, we are God's children, so sons and daughters, and we are co-heirs with Christ. So whatever Jesus gets, we get because of Jesus, not because of me, not because of you, not because of any merit we did. And you may have grown up in a household where, where if you were really, really good, then you were loved doesn't work that way with God. You may have grown up in a household where if you were really, really bad, or you did bad things, then that you weren't loved. It doesn't work that way with God. Romans 8, 15 to 17 says, we're co-heirs with Christ. Whatever he gets, we get. Well, what Jesus gets from the Father is the Father's voice saying, you are my son whom I love, and in you I am well pleased. And that is the gift of the gospel. God loves you so much through Jesus, and we can learn to feed off of that love so that when, and I'm at, it's not a matter of if, because it's going to happen again and again and again, when that voice comes back, that, that lure that says, come over here to get your, your fix, to, this, will, this will finally make you valuable, this will finally give you approval, we can stop and say, no, I'm going to feed off of Jesus, I'm going to feed off of Jesus' approval for me. Uh, I'll close with this. Um, I thought when I wrote the book in 2018 that this book would solve that problem for all of the readers and in myself as well. I, I saw it uh, the way we would see a vaccine. It's a, a one-time shot and now you're fixed. Well, I just experienced from 2018 until today that that was not true, that I still had my struggles. I still had my thirsts and hungers and desires that felt unmet. And what I found was, and, and, and what's added into the new book is, Jesus doesn't work like a vaccine. He is a Thanksgiving feast that we get to feed off of every single day. And I love eating. Uh, I definitely eat my three meals a day uh, and beyond. And with Jesus, it's no different. That every day, we are to feed off of him for his acceptance, approval, and validation of us. Uh, and, and that's the journey that we get to be on. It doesn't happen on our own. Uh, we don't do it solo. We do it in community. And that's why we need other men and women in our lives that are reminding us of this love and are reminding us of, of these truths. And uh, that's another reason we started the alumni group. I didn't want anybody to read the book and then wonder where their community was going to come from. If they're a man trying to find his identity in Christ in an over-sexualized world. We need to do this together. We need to have authentic conversations that go beyond surface level, beyond Sunday morning, beyond everything's good and fine, because everything's not good and fine. <laughs> and we need uh, brothers around us and, and sisters around us for women in this area that can, that, can, that can receive that and that can show us the love of the Father, that can, that can look at us in the eyes and say, you are loved by God, by me. And, 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 and that message sinks it deeper and deeper. So let me just read to you a little bit. I did three takeaways at the end of the book. The last chapter is called Breakaways and Takeaways. And I just want to read a little bit about from takeaway number two, about learning to feed off of Jesus deeply and daily. Uh, uh, so here we go. The church tradition I grew up in stressed daily devotions, also called quiet time, also called God and I time. But at the end of the day, it was a copious amount of Bible reading plus prayer requests. I am all for Bible reading, even copious amounts of it. I have read the one-year Bible multiple times, and I'm in the middle of reading it again at my own pace. And I'm all for prayer requests, but that is not what I'm talking about here. Our typical idea of daily devotions is cognitive, meaning it's a brain-powered activity. 
go to the Bible to learn lessons from it or to learn about God. We then take these relatively impossible lessons, be patient, love sacrificially, don't lust, and we try with all of our might to apply them. We fail more often than we succeed, but we keep trying. The path to righteousness is to try harder. We try harder in our choices and in the amount of Bible we read. So it's no wonder most of us don't do our daily devotions, even though we know we should do that. When we read the Bible to learn information about God, we forget that this is different from spending time with God. I can know a lot of information about LeBron James or George Washington, but that's not spending time with them. I can know a lot of information about my wife, but that's different from spending intimate time with her. The cognitive approach creates a malnourished marriage. The same is true of our approach to God. Let's look at prayer requests as a case study. Prayer requests are cognitive. God give me this. God give this person that. God help me with this. They come from the head. Even if we really want them at a deep heart level, saying the words is a cognitive act. We say them and move on. Now let's look at a prayer you have likely prayed a thousand times. God, take away my desire to lust. Or maybe after reading this book, you've switched it to, God, replace my desire for lust with a desire for you. These prayers are like going to the grocery store and asking the food to nourish your body. Hi, food. Please nourish me. It's treating God <laughs> like a genie in a bottle, expecting him to perform for you because you said some magic words rather than treating him as the very food you need to survive. What do you do with food? You eat it. You don't study it, categorize it, quantify it, or try really hard to be like it. You eat it. And you eat it over and over and over. You might also grow it, prepare it, study it, cook it, and smell it, but you always eat it. A prayer like that looks and sounds something like this. I'm going to read a prayer that I wrote, and, and if you will, just close your eyes and pray this prayer uh, with me as I, as I pray. And I suggest it, praying this on your knees or with your hands raised to the sky or your, your face planted on the ground. Jesus, I am broken. I come humbly before your throne. You are almighty God, King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus, I'm in, I am so in need of you. I am so in need of your grace. Thank you for giving it to me freely, even though I don't deserve it. I know I deserve your wrath, but you give me your grace instead. You make me whole. Thank you. What a gift. You love me and embrace me as your son or your daughter. Love, holy, righteous. You made me a new creation. There's no more condemnation, not because of what I've done, but because of what you've done for me. I am weak and feeble. I cannot produce fruit without you. Forgive me for all the times I've tried to do things on my own rather than relying on you. Help me to rely on you now. I'm struggling with lust right now. There's something deep in me that wants to feel loved, approved of, and validated. God, I confess that it feels like a woman can give this to me. I know that will never satisfy me. God, I rest in you. I rest in your love for me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for adopting me. Hold me in your arms, Jesus. I am your son whom you love and whom you are well pleased. I am your son whom you love in whom you are well pleased. Now, be still. Stop doing anything and let him do. Meditate on his love for you. Raise your hands to him in surrender. Receive his love. Let the Father's arms wrap around you. Say amen to that prayer. <laughs> uh, I'll just wrap up with a few more lines from the book. Do you see the difference? Do you feel the difference? One is praise from the head. is looking for a genie in a bottle. Answer. The other is praise from the soul. It is experience. It's not looking for an answer. It knows it is praying to the answer. I'll read that one more time and I'll stop. It is not looking for an answer. It knows it is praying to the answer. There's a lot more that I'd like to read, but 
That's why there's a book for you to read. So uh, that just comes from the section that I wrote recently. I wrote a chapter uh, on my reflections of two, year, two years of having the book out, being seen as an expert in the area of sexual purity, having my own struggles, stop, uh, stopping being vulnerable because of being seen as an expert, feeling like if I shared those vulnerabilities, then somehow my product uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be as uh, convincing and just wrote about that, honestly, in the book and, and, and uh, how God really had to straighten me out and, and humble me and has put me in a really healthy place uh, now where I have lots of vulnerable community in my life uh, on many fronts and in many layers and in, in many regular meetings uh, that I have, which is which is really allowed me to, to be in a place where I can stand here and say, I'm experiencing the freedom of Jesus uh, in a very, very real way. So... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there. That's enough of me uh, talking. Um, I just, we're going to open it up for some Q&A. So if you have uh, questions, you can, you can think about your questions. And could we get that clipboard back up here? And we will uh, announce some winners of our gift cards, maybe while uh, you are thinking of your questions. And I have friends in the crowd. And again, I will remind my friends, uh, this is a family event. My children are present. Do not ask any questions about anything that I do not want to explain to my four-year-old, my eight-year-old, and my nine-year-old. And uh, no, we have, we have not had that talk yet. All right. I, ha I have a randomizer app that we're going to use to, uh, to pick our winners here. Uh, so give me a moment using fancy technology. Uh, okay. Number one, Zach. Zach, I always mess up your name. Is it Bartels or Bart Bartles? Thank you. Bartles! I'm so glad you Bartles. All right, very good. Uh, these are $15 gift cards to Baker Book House, which is the space for it right now. You can use these tonight. Next is Kyle Zooks. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Don't get yourself. A speech. A speech or no? No speech. <laughs> I'm excited, man. And last but not least, Dave Jerusalem. Wow. Dave Jerusalem. Boom. Wow. All right, all right. I, Thank you. I know. All right. Wow. Let's just wrap up with some Q&A. Uh, again, there's people watching online, so come up with some good questions. So we have... Uh, some things for them to hear as well. Questions about the author journey, uh, about the book, or anything else? I can only imagine, Zach, what you have in store for Q&A. Go ahead. Here's my question. It's a jerky question. Do you still have, like, a half a garage full of the black, white, and red ones? That is not, <laughs> a, jerky, that is not a jerky question. Um, so, this is a cool, just, you know when God does really small, cool things that he doesn't have to do? Uh, this was one of those. I, I, I do the book at the groups still, right? Actually, so with Zondervan, signed the contract a year ago or whatever it was. And I ended the contract. I had to stop selling. You know, I always, that'd be interesting, right? Pitting like my first book against this one, my skinny <laughs> published book. You're right. Right. It makes sense. So I had to not sell them. And I had a few boxes left. But I also had this predicament where I'm still leading groups for another year before this comes out. So I had to have books for the groups. I literally had almost ex exactly the right amount of books down to three books. I have three left. <laughs> I was just, and I started with a thousand that, 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 uh, that I bought. So they were for sale online that I did you know, print. I had a thousand that I had in boxes, three left. Anyway, that's a wow. good story. So what else? Good question. Was there, in the process of, you said there was two years really between when you first wrote uh, the book and then it got released by Zondervan. You mentioned that you get to have hundreds of people really just help and poke at it yeah. to develop it to what it is now. Was there one or two questions or insights yeah. that yes. really stood out to you? Really good question, yeah. Yeah, so uh, shout out to my friend Andy. Uh, was it was one and, and, he, and he kind of would encompass a couple of feedback. So at the beginning of the book, if you, if you, some of you have read the book, it's about entitlement, and it's one of the most unique things about the book. And and in fact, I to this day feel like 
it's a chapter that I've expected to get more negative feedback on than I've got. I really haven't gotten any negative feedback on it. We've got a lot of positive feedback on it uh, in the sense, but and I won't explain it all to you, but it's about entitlement. It's really about how what would initially shift in my direction from being really entitled before God to God showing me, you don't want me to give you what you deserve because you deserve my wrath. Instead, I give you my grace and my mercy. And then to, to be able to enjoy that, it's like this amazing thing. So one of the confusions was, okay, got it. So do I, do I go before God as a, uh, we, I, I have people picture being on Mount Sinai in Exodus 19 where God uh, basically introduces himself to Israel. And the mountain's quaking and there's thunder and lightning. And, and in the small group curriculum, by the way, free small group curriculum included, forgot to mention that. Yeah, so in the small group curriculum, we go through and we say, we have guys close their eyes and, and picture being on the mountain and, and the thunder and the lightning. And, and if you touch the mountain, you die as well. And then I say in the, in the questions, um, would any of you during that experience go up to God and ask him to, you know, give you a better, uh, you know, marriage or single, single life when it comes to intimacy, right? Uh, would you, would you ask him to, um, give you what you're, what you're, you know, want? Uh, and then we all say, it's a joke, right? Nobody would do that. We all fall flat on our face. But then in the next, like the next lesson is, but guess what you get instead? You're a son, you're adopted. Yeah. And God loves you so much. So a little confusion was, so how do I approach God? How do, do I approach wow. him as this sort of uh, humble sinner, you know, you know kind of thing, or do I, do I approach him in this freedom of being, of being loved? So I would just say that was one really helpful thing that I remember adding a lot of material into, not in that last chapter, but just in the chapter that it's in, just emphasizing what does it mean to be a new creation? And, and just how those two things go hand in hand, where you, I think you need you need both. Uh, for me to for, for me to enjoy His grace to the depths that it is, I have to first realize how much I don't deserve the grace, and then I realize how much grace I was given. Uh, but I don't. I would just say that's that's a, a something in the book. I feel like I'm not fleshing it out well now, but in the book it's fleshed out really well. <laughs> <laughs> a plug for the book, not for me as a speaker. Um, it's, it's fleshed out well to give us an idea of what it means to be a new creation. Like we're not that old creation anymore, but if we forget what, if we forget what it was that we were, then we, we just fall back into that sort of yeah. entitlement cycle. So that would be one. Yeah. I would say others would just be in my own life, just um, and, and in a guy's life, you know, where, where they're struggling with certain just these struggles have certain nuances to them where things are kind of like this and then Satan comes along and he throws a dart kind of over here. Yeah. And so I would just say there's a lot more tactics, metaphors, ideas, you know, added in uh, that weren't there the first time around. Yeah. So that's a good question. Thanks. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, talk a little bit more about the uh, Time period of being rejected by yeah. the trying to keep, you know, keep your uh, spirits open and stay focused on, on what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So he's asking about that time period of being rejected by publishers. Just that, that was that feeling of rejection and failure. And God, and, and some mentors might have, might have shared this too. I don't remember, but I, I really remember God, what, what he gave me to hold on to. I feel like in during seasons like that, God just gives you a like raft to hold on to. You know, a life preserver. It's still rocky. It's no fun. It's, 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 it's not like, oh, I guess got rejected. It's not a party. But uh, he gives you something to hold on to so you don't drown, right? And what I held on to was it was the why question. Know your why. And in some, you know, big name kind of people say that in two ways and stuff. But for me, it was, <laughs> it was why it was I want to do ministry. Like, I want to minister to men that have the same issue I have. God has brought me freedom to it. That's what I want. And I really just realized I didn't need a publisher to do that. I could do that now. And maybe it would just be with dozens of men. Or maybe it would get to be hundreds of men. It doesn't have to be thousands of men, right? We have this idea, as, uh, and you can see that in churches all over the place. Uh, there's many, many great, wonderful churches that are 100 people or a few dozen people. Uh, most churches around the world are a few dozen people, right? And so it's, that's, I think that's an American lie that I bought into is if it's not big, it's not significant. Yeah. And I would argue uh, in the Bible, in the, New, in, in the New Testament church and Jesus ministry, it's almost the opposite. He, he like ran away from big and really emphasized uh, 
small, you know, mustard seed and things. So that was it for me. It was just wanting to do ministry, and that is really what freed me. I remember when I did the indie publishing, I really felt good about it. I felt free. I felt authentic. I felt like I could pastor. That's a verb for me, is I want to pastor. Like, I want to pastor people. Um, and, and that became my, my why, and that's what got me. Kyle Zook's Green Rapids Press. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I feel like we're like a straight man. Thanks for sharing, by the way. Uh, yeah. I appreciate it, Noah. Uh, what were the uh, the groups that you do simultaneously or throughout the, yeah. the book? Uh, was that always like an intention to have it like be an extra layer of we're talking about a lot of this hard stuff, guys can process that. Uh, I guess just explain like kind of how that how that came to be. Yeah, so the of the groups that started right as I started working for Covenant Eyes. So uh, part of my story between planting, pastoring in Lansing for 13 years, uh, I transitioned from pastoring to work full time for Covenant Eyes uh, for a, a period of time. And I don't. It's been a few years, so I don't remember if I started the groups. I think, honestly, I think I started the groups because one of my roles with Covenant Eyes was to be a church consultant and um, to kind of help churches with Covenant Eyes software and with my book. And they, being Covenant Eyes, wanted me to start groups. And I went, okay. And I did. And uh, I did a speaking engagement at a little conference they did. And it filled up, like both groups filled up. And back me have a room for everybody. Uh, and it was just, and then it went, uh, we keep doing these. Those first couple of groups, I mean, all the groups have been fruitful, but those first few groups, wow, they just, it felt so fruitful. You know, when you first discover something and you go, this is a need, this is a real need, we got to keep doing this. And that's been cool too. God is, has grown our Beyond the Battle groups now, where I'm still part of the groups, but I have alumni that lead. Wow, and then cool. and then I'm a part of, it. and that's pretty cool because we're we're you know as a as a as a as well, any Christian, but as a pastor, we want to raise up leaders. We want to raise up leaders who can disciple others. We want to dis raise up disciples who can disciple. So now we have um, three alumni that lead the groups, and I participate in the groups, and then I lead the alumni groups on Saturday. So it's been cool how God has um, just continued to fan that and play. And that was not my idea to start with. Wow. Huh. That's great. Anything on Facebook, Becky? Okay. Any other questions? Great questions. Cool. Going once? Going twice. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for reading. Thank you for your support. And uh, look forward to.